Hi, good afternoon. Um, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. So I am uh, doing this Facebook Live from Paris. Um, let's see, okay, so I think uh, um, just go to straight. This today's topic is uh, Who are you as you fall asleep? So uh, um, I think it's kind of very, very important that uh, we, you know, every given moment that we are, we have a kind of state of being. Um, for example, if uh, we look this very moment, you observe yourself. Um, who are you this moment? Uh, how do you feel this moment? Um, what kind of identity you have? Are you uh, feeling free? Are you feeling um, not free? Are you feeling emotional? Are you feeling uh, uh, kind of stuck in some ideas and pains? So basically every given moment we have a sense of I, identity, and this identity uh, can go back and forth during a deep meditation, you feel very free and very open and very uh, beautiful. And during another moment, you can feel very um, negative, very painful. Whole world seems not good. So it fluctuates, it changes. So during the daytime, we go through so many different ups and downs, like a, probably like a stock market and uh, goes ups and downs so much. And uh, also, um, like in uh, Buddhism, it says like uh, 84,000 thoughts. So in one 24 cycle of day, maybe having 84,000 thoughts, ups and downs, goods and bads and, and so on. But it's, it's more important to pay attention to before you go to sleep. So because during the daytime, fluctuation is up and down. So you have a bad thought, then maybe you recover. You have a you have a good thought, maybe you go down. So you go ups and downs quite quite of uh, fast. But before you go to sleep, whatever you hold, your sense of I, who are you as you fall asleep? Who are you? That means how you identify. Um, for let's say if somebody. Um, looks as a sleep and dream as a very important uh, path, a very important uh, meditation, very, very important way of entering into the sleep sacred dimension. And so the person maybe before even, be, for example, afternoon sometime when you begin to get less energy, you're kind of feeling like more introverted, you're conscious of your body, you're conscious of your exhaustion, uh, you kind of move with it and you are trying to kind of trying to uh, focusing more uh, like a, this sacred journey towards the sleep. Uh, you are trying to maybe eat less, uh, get rest more, clear your mind, set right mood, praying, sending good intention or whatever you wish to experience in the night. You kind of set up your mind that way. When you do that, then you're, you're preparing well. And maybe you can, you can have different things. For example, you can, be right before you go to sleep, you can go to sleep like a, a clear, clear sky with the luminous sun. Who you are, it's like a clear sky and luminous sky. The sun shining in that clear sky. So you feel so much space and you feel so much light, uh, not externally, but internally you feel so much space, kind of freedom, and so much light, like a lot of awareness, connection. And then in that freedom, in that space, you feel uh, possibility that you feel a lot of uh, qualities, so qualities like joy, love, compassion, equanimity, like that. So if you go to sleep like that, for sure that how you have prepared and who you are that moment will affect entire entire night so if you're going four five six seven hours or go to sleep 
that night is affected by that space and that awareness and that warmth. So more chance to have a so-called clear dream, clear sleep, or more chance to have a, a sleep of clear light, more chance to have premonition dreams, the dreams is predictable, or more chance to have what we call like a uh, divination type of dreams, like uh, able to dream things that which really like are guiding your life or or having a dream that which kind of you really understand what's happening in your life, around your life, in future of your life, you begin to uh, able to realize, predict, understand far better yourself and around you in and your future because you went to sleep in very clear state of mind. But if you if you have a bad day, and particularly unconscious bad, bad day, days where you are very stressed out, very upset, angry, not conscious, uh, not aware, not able to tr transform anything, not, trans uh, not able to transcend anything, uh, become very victimized by these uh, habitual experiences and if you when you have that kind of energy last moment of you before you go to sleep so what happens obviously what happened is that evening you you more chance that you you will identify like a pain body pain identity you are you are basically you don't have a pain you don't have a confusion, you are confusion, you are pain, you are conflict, you are sick. So being sick, being pain, being conflict, being confusion, it's far worse than having one of them. So, so then what happens if you go to sleep in that moment, in that state, that entire night that you are affected by that negative identity, pain identity. And in a way it's like a, it's really bad. I mean basically think about that if, if, if it's a bad to have a bad experiences, painful experiences for half an hour, then it's truly a bad to have experiences of pain for seven hours, right? So, and unfortunately so many people out there, people go to sleep exactly like that. That is exactly the reason why today's world, why we have so much sleep deprivation problem, lack of sleep, lack of good quality of sleep, uh, lack of restful sleep. Uh, and uh, so, so basically people then wake up with uh, not with a good mood, not in a good space, not motivated, not energized, not positive outlook. So people just basically get up not good. And then when you, when you enter into the world with that negative mood, and obviously whoever you meet, whatever you do, whoever you interact with, you're not going to have a good, good day. So basically you don't have a good day because you don't have a good morning. You don't have a good morning because you did not have a good sleep. You did not have a good sleep because you did not have a preparation night before you went to sleep. You are not in the good being. You, who you are was not good. That's why all these things happen. So I give you example like a friend of mine who went through um, brain surgery. So before he went to the brain surgery and uh, he was obviously he was a little bit fearful. Uh, obviously we, we all will be worried about that, right? So he was praying, so and he was actually praying the prayers out loud. So and he goes to then with anesthesia, then he, they put in sleep, and then when the uh, process is done, the operation is done. Uh, when he woke up, when he became a conscious, he was he woke up himself, deciding those same prayers, same, same mantra. And people around him were like a little bit of shock and a little bit of surprise, saying, what is he doing? And he just woke up from the operation, but he is just singing prayers. So imagine if you, before you go to a brain operation, 
and uh, able to pray, hold the prayer, and th through that sleep, through that drug, and when you wake up, able to maintain that energy, prayer, and able to wake up praying, that is, it, it's a good, it tells something to us. What it tells something to us, so before every single night, before you go to sleep, that five, ten minute is very critical. As I, as I always give example of form, so imagine today's world, we, what we remember, every single night we go to sleep. Think about this. Every single night we go to sleep, what are we trying to do with our phone? Well, it depends on if you're asking me, I usually uh, trying to turn it off so that signals are not there, uh, if I remember. But definitely what one thing we do, we all trying to connect to the power so that when you wake up in the morning, the phone is fully charged. But no, no one of you, no one of us, we will turn on a long movie before you go to sleep, a long movie before you go to sleep, and then you go to sleep. If you do that, what do you expect in the morning when you wake up? You, what you will find is a dead phone. No energy in that phone, no batteries in that phone. Uh, then you will you will see how much whole night the phone has been drained by that movies because it's the videos playing with the audios are playing and um, so basically uh, it's the same thing that before you go to sleep you are playing whole your samsaric movies in your head and not being conscious of that and you expect to have a good sleep you don't have a good sleep, you don't have a good dream, you wake up with dead body, you wake up with lack of energy. So it's, it's very simple, right? So with the phone, we clearly know every person will charge their phone every single night before you go to sleep. So if phone is that important to charge before you go to sleep, just think about it, how, 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 how important you are how important your body is, how important your heart is, how important your brain is to, to charge it. So how do you charge it? How do you charge it? Same way as, as your phone, you want to make sure all the apps are shut it down. Clear them, all the app, running apps, clear them. Number one. And then you turn it off, if maybe you can turn it completely off, that's great. Then you plug it to the power. Then you just simply go to sleep. With peace of mind, you go to sleep. So maybe for us, as we live in a modern society, maybe it's really important, phone should be our reminder. Every single night, every moment, that moment before you go to sleep, when you touch your phone, when you remember to charge your phone, that is the message saying you should, next it's you. Next it's you. Okay? If you don't charge for a phone, then maybe it's hard to say finding a reminder, right? But if you charge phone, then moment you charge phone, tell. Because world is a language, symbolic. We can read uh, people who wanted to be happy, they look at everything, everything reminds them to be happy. People who wanted to be sad, everything they look, everything they hear, everything they feel, it's trigger their pain. It's symbolic language that communicate in the universe. We get a message, constant message. So, so the phone is your messenger. That moment you charge your phone, Remind, I'm repeating this again and again because I know you hear it, but you will not do it. So, moment you charge phone tonight, what should you remember? Next is you. Next is you. What does that mean? 
that basically means I need to prepare a little better. What, need, what I need to do, I need to reflect my life. I, if good experiences, bad experience, I process them, I say goodbye. Um, if I have some negative feelings, I try to kind of work with them, breathe it out, clear them. I feel a little bit better space, positive space. I pray, I sing something, I write state of consciousness and you go to sleep. So that's, I think, very important. Imagine that uh, if you practice like this, let's say you practice 10 minutes before you go to sleep. Okay? So 10 minutes to clear, 10 minutes to bring uh, connect, 10 minutes to bring more awareness and prayer, 10 minutes the intention to go into the sacred journey. So in, I'm not saying 10 minutes, 10 minutes, but in, within 10 minutes you're doing all of those things and then you in the right state of being, you sleep. That power of that 10 minutes will last 7 hours. Imagine, it's very powerful, right? But on the, in the contrary, most of the night, you don't even intentionally do anything. You have, you have a habit of doing just th thinking negatively or worrying about things. So just before you go to sleep, just before you go to sleep, every single night before you go to sleep, there is no one single night your attention it's its attention is nowhere attention it's always somewhere every single night when you go to sleep attention is always somewhere and that somewhere is not with the choice of yours somewhere is more driven conditioned by your pain and patterns that you just kind of worry about something That's it. You go to sleep. So let's say before you go to sleep, you worry for 10 minutes and you fall asleep. So the rest for whole night, you are worrying. Now imagine the negative impact of that worrying, being in pain for eight hours. Imagine physical consequences, health consequences, psychological consequences, it's going to affect you. So it's just somehow, I think it's really important to pay very close attention before you go to sleep. So I, t I tell people, uh, you know, people reading my book, I know like a book, it's a little bit uh, complicated, maybe for some people it's a little complicated, but I said at least just trying to be aware of your your state of being. For example, I give another example. Like if you if you watch a child, you watch anybody who you is moments where you did not sleep. Somebody is sleeping. You somebody wakes up and somebody wakes up and then they, they wake up and then they're not necessarily conscious of they wake up, but then they, they wake up and they're trying to find a pillow or they're trying to find the right position. They're moving this way, they're moving that way. And then at some point they feel like, okay, I'm moving this, finding my uh, right physical position, finding my right physical position. At some point they feel like, okay, this is it, my right physical position. And then they just go to sleep in that very moment. But there, there are not necessarily conscious, but there is like a pattern. Physical, they're trying to find the right position and before they go to sleep. We are we, we are more conscious in some sense in the body like that. But as far as the mind is concerned, imagine you, you wake up you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a nightmare or you have a, some bad thoughts and and then you wake up because of those and then you don't try to clear the mind. You don't try to say, breathe it out. You're trying to, trying to process that negative thought. You're trying, trying to meditate, trying to pray, to clear that thought before you go to sleep again. Very few people do that. Most people do not do that. 
So what does that mean? Whatever negative thoughts and emotions and feelings woke them up, they would go to sleep back with the same negative thought and emotion and impact the rest of their sleep. But if they are aware, for example, myself, I I always when I middle of the night for some for some reason, and particularly there's some negative reason or bad dream or uncomfortable thought or even even sometimes just positive things like excitement or something like that. I'm excited about a project or something like that. I just cannot sleep or something. I'm just trying to be aware of that and clear that. Breathe it out. Finding more restful, silence, peaceful place. And, and maintaining that silence and peaceful play before actually I fall asleep. Then I know the rest of the night is affecting me positively. But that, I don't know, it's not, not always a guarantee to happen, but I, from my point of view, I always try to remember to do those practices when my sleep was interrupted by some negative event. Because I do not want the negative event continuously impact my rest of the sleep. This is not, you know, think about it, this is not, I'm not talking only very fancy sleep yoga practice, sleep practice of clear light, I mean, even from the point of view of health. Good sleep is really important. There are so many as billions of dollars are spent on a sleep pills. There are so many people are suffering of lack of sleep or lack of good quality of sleep. So many people's health has been affected by lack of sleep. Or so many people make horrible decisions because of lack of sleep. So many people not able to uh, uh, connect with their the deepest quality of creativity because of their bad relation and a lack of sleep. So it's it's very very important to able to have right relationship. So basically, the here question is who are you as you fall asleep? This is the question. So if, before you go to sleep, or it, just ask that who am who am I tonight? Which means if you're going to sleep, you can ask this question. Who am I now as I am going to sleep? I am a sky. I am that light. I am that freedom and warmth. With that space, you're trying to fall asleep. Or if you, when you ask, who am I? And you kind of don't know what you feel. Who am I? Who am I? So not knowing who am I is also like an ignorance, right? So who am I is that one who does not know who am I. It's not good either. But because that means who am I, I don't know who am I, that a sense of I have no place to relate, connect. In a sense, I am lost, but I'm, I don't know I am lost. So, some sense of being that sky or a sacred space, being that sun or be, that light, awareness, being that love and joy or that warmth. So some sense of being those qualities of inner refuge. Like in a Dzogchen teaching, we say that, uh, being like uh, experiences, experiences of clarity, experiences of emptiness, experiences of bliss, Devi Nyam, Tongpi Nyam, Savi Nyam, Deton Savi Nyam Sum. So, being or experiencing the, those qualities, some, some level of those quality before you go to sleep. That's the medicine. A sleep pill. 
no side effect sleep pill, no side effect side effect meditation. It will guarantee restful sleep, good dream, and good good mood to wake up, and very likely good good next good day. So, in a, as a categories of teaching, we we talk about three different kind of sleep. We say kori nyi, samsaric sleep, one, vesalji nyi, the sleep of clear light, marik nyi, the sleep of samsara. So, three different kind of sleep we talk. So, kori nyi, sleep of samsara, it's referring to basically what is samsara. Samsara, we say, Dangzi wang ki dungal the chepa. The one is like a samsaric being, definition of samsaric being is the one who possess pain or suffering. Uh, Sometimes I try to be a little bit more softer language. The one who possess discomfort as a result of grasping. I possess discomfort as a result of grasping. I'm uncomfortable because I'm grasping on something, I'm grasping on a person, thing, my life, my pain, my wish, my desire. I am in pain because I'm grasping on something. So that is samsara. So you, most of the time, most of the night, for most of us, we have a samsaric sleep. What does that mean? That means we have a dream. Of course, we usually people say every ninety minute you have ram ram moment dream. You have a dream, so these dreams are very much caused by your psychological state, your emotional state, your activities of life. You are able to process and unprocess those experiences causes those dreams, and most of the time our experiences of our view of the world day, our interaction with the day, our experience of the day is not something that we are conscious or not something that we are able to guide and transform, something that kind of happens to us a bit through our conditions, through our limitations. And as a result of that, we, we dream. You know, I definitely have a dreams yesterday night, uh, beautiful dreams, very interesting dreams. But I think, first I thought there might be some dream of clarity or something, but then I have a question, maybe there were also kind of samsaric dreams, but very interesting samsaric dreams, but there were kind of samsaric dreams, because they were related to the events of my awakened state. But beautiful, positive, you wake up with the joy, but it's still some degree of samsaric dream because they are related to the events of the day. Second, the sleep of clear light. Sleep of clear light is just imagine a great meditator, person who is great yogis, who meditate, who who is able to remain in that state of clear light during the daytime frequently, throughout the day, frequently, in and out, but able to maintain that awareness, state of Rigpa, state of clear light, and, and, uh, and particularly who is able to maintain the state of clear light when this person uh, perceives some uh, heavy, heavy perceptions, like difficult visions, image of challenge, image of enemy, image of pain, when it, people see it, feel it, interact with it, immediately this person transcends those emotions and thoughts into a clear light during the daytime and have a habit of doing that and does a lot and able to successfully able to transcend and transform and able to rest in that clear light. Those people, when they go to sleep, they will do, if they have been doing many times throughout the day, and for sure, they will be doing before they go to sleep, right? Because they know before go to sleep who you are before you fall asleep. It's very important question, most one of the most important question. And they will clearly able to sleep 
before they go to sleep, they will sleep in that clear light state. So when they go to sleep in that clear light state, very likely whole rest of the night they will able to maintain in principle, they will able to maintain in that clear light sleep. That means they're not having any particular dreams in principle. I mean, I don't know what the science will say, but in principle of these teaching, I think uh, it's possible that you have hours of sleep, no ram, no, no, no dreams. The idea is the Buddha's idea is enlightened beings don't think. I, enlightened beings do not conceptualize. Enlightened beings do not analyze. Enlightened beings do not judge. Enlightened beings do not have a plan. Enlightened beings do not have a agenda. What they do, it happens spontaneously in relation to the surroundings. Somebody needs help, they are helped. Somebody needs them to be go away, they disappear. That's Enlightened being is like a crystal. If they are cause condition to cause condition to shine, they shine. If there is no cause condition condition to shine, they do not shine. But it's not like a professions like human beings. People say, "I can shine. Please let me shine. I can love. Please let me love. I want to love you." Parents saying, "I want to love my child. I want to love my partner. I want to love somebody." And there's somebody. Even they don't need love from you, or they don't want to be loved by you, then you feel like angry. You're getting angry at the same person who you are planning to love when you know they don't want your love. That's how we samsaric being we are, we are right? So anyway, they clear light. So so three sleep of ignorance. Okay, so the, maybe the, this is what I missed here. So sleep of ignorance was the last one. So sleep of ignorance is is the when you go to sleep, moment you wake up, no dream, no clear light, like total, total darkness. And very often the sleep of ignorance happens as a result, result of total physical exhaustion, total emotional exhaustion, conceptual exhaustion, happens because of uh, a sense of basically kind of loss and exhaustion. So, so these three different kind of sleep, um, every single night we go to sleep, one of them take places. Every single night we go to sleep, one of them take places. So for us, if we are a little bit more aware if we're a little bit more aware who we are as we follow sleep, we have a chance. Basically, this is what it is, right? So basically, every single night you go to sleep, you have a chance to enter into sleep of clear light, sleep of samsara, or sleep of ignorance you have a chance. And for sure, most of the night, you will imagine where we go. Just, just because of not being conscious. So please, think about this. Every single night, you have an option, you have a chance, but nothing is a guarantee, but you have an option clear your mind, self-reflect, trying to process some of the thoughts and emotions, trying to clear them through the breath, trying to say goodbye to some of them and trying to recognize them and trying to prepare yourself to the sacred sleep. It's like a most important sacred journey that you are going, going to go tonight. So I'm, I'm very excited. Tonight I am entering into the sacred journey. I'm entering into the sacred temple. I'm, I'm going to visit the most important temple in my life. So that kind of intention. You, and when you see that way, feel that way, prepare that way and do that way, 
Your knight is working for you, not against you. If your knight begin to work with you, your day will begin to work with you. If your day will work, begin to work with you, night it will be easier in the night to work. These, these are like a cycle and transitions. In Majud Mother Tantra, it is in the teaching there that there is a kind of important uh, place where they talk about these transitions. Transitions basically is like a transition because we go through transition. For example, the feeling. Uh, let's say if I go to sleep around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, so by the evening, afternoon, I can feel myself is I'm losing kind of energy, I'm tired, I am entering my senses inward, I do not have the same kind of energy to focus and make discriminate things, my experiences. So when I feel that, I'm aware, I know, I know I am tired. I know I need to, to prepare myself now. Maybe a couple of hours, two hours or something. Then I go on my bed. On my bed. As I lie down, I, I can see, I can be trying to reflect my mind. I see this thought, that thought, I see I caught up with some experience of the past. I can notice I'm worried about tomorrow. So whatever is happening, a little bit more introvertedly being aware of them. You might not be able to change it, but at least being aware of it, the awareness is changing for you something. I try now I'm getting closer to for that. Now I'm I I find my position, I close my eye. The last critical moment. I am, let's say, the possibility, I am not aware at all this moment. I don't know who I am. That doesn't excuse you because you are always someone, I said earlier, you are always someone. But that doesn't help not knowing who you are. Or, I feel pain. Difficult day. Difficult thoughts. Activated my pain body too many hours. I am still my pain body. So, at least as I close my eye, I recognize I am my pain body. I'm identifying with my pain this moment. And I do not want to go to sleep right now. With this, this identity, I don't want to go to sleep. So, basically, as I close my eye, I reflect it. I am aware of it. My awareness is already transcending that pain identity. If my, I have a strong awareness, it might do more. If I have even, just even having an awareness is already helping a little bit. Then I maybe do a nine breathing or any breathing. I try to pray to enlightened beings, guardians and protectors, my teachers. I try to feel that I have a lot of support in my life, remembering my supports. I have whole cyber sangha is practicing with me right now. Many of them are doing so. I think you feel that those connections. Pray, clear it. Stillness, silence, spaciousness, clear sky, luminous light, warmth. Like a, or maybe images like a, a baby resting in the loving arms of the mother. That space, the sacred space, that sky is the mother. I am the baby. I'm not separated from her, connected. I'm resting on her lap. And that's, I'm resting in that 
sacred being, sacred space. I'm feeling the warmth, the universal warmth, some sense of a little bit like that, so feeling that. And then you go to sleep. So you, you recognize where you were and you recognize need to change and you, you uh, put the energy and you change it. Now you're ready to go to sleep. How much, how long it takes time? It doesn't take so much time. As you trust this, how much it takes time to mess up things? It doesn't take much time to mess up things. It does not take so much time to fix it either. But you have to trust, you have to remember. So, so that's all for today. Um, I hope, um, just kind of basically ask this simple question, who are you as you fall asleep every single night? And if you're not, you don't like who you are, you have a choice not to be that. If you don't, if you recognize who you are that you don't like, you have a choice to change that. If you don't know who you are, you have, you have a choice to recognize who you are. And to do that every single night, very important. Uh, so one time a student of mine asked me, you know, what should I do before I go to sleep? Or she said uh, somebody was working on a book project and she said that uh, I needed to say something very in quintessential instruction to people saying what, what they should do before they go to sleep. I, I told her, think about this. Every night when you before you go to sleep, you wash, you brush your teeth. Every, if you went to a jogging, and you come back with the jogging, you're sweating, you're smelling, and with your uh, running shoes, sweatshirt, and do you want it to go to sleep right away on the bed? with that jogging shoes and a sweatshirt and weather sweating. Do you want it to go to sleep like that? No. So what do you want it to do? You take out those clothes. You take a shower. You feel clean. You feel fresh. You feel good. Then you go to sleep. Right? That makes sense, right? Everybody knows that. So same way, physically we know how to clean ourselves before we go, how to feel fresh before we go to sleep. Mentally, emotionally, everybody goes there. They're running hold there, they're sweating, samsaric sweat, samsaric pain, samsaric running shoes, and they have all these smelly, samsaric smells, and they throw themselves half dead on the bed and try and go to sleep. How you experience a good sleep, how you, how you expect to have a good dream, you can, you will not. So think about it. So do something before you go to sleep. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful. Um, so uh, yeah, so that we will yeah, so we will next uh, today is Tuesday, so this is the uh, the next Thursday, so we will be continuing um, uh, our some questions and answer. I know, like I haven't. Uh, uh, answer some of the questions previous ones so uh, as, as a, it's a little bit different when you're traveling than when you're home you have, have a little more time to prepare to teach and everything when you're traveling it's a little bit more challenging um, so uh, but I will I remember if some some questions were there if I feel important I will more like uh, planning to do more a little bit more spontaneous uh, answering some of the questions I will try to do that so meanwhile, have a good sleep and a good practice. And you, we all know we are supporting each other the moment we are following sleep. Okay, thank you.